Hey guys, Mike in the Woods here, and today we're going to talk about five useful everyday carry items that you can print at home on a desktop 3D printer. So please like the video if you find it interesting, subscribe if you're interested in more videos, and leave a comment down below. Let's get into it. For those technically savvy enough to use them and create 3D models, 3D printers are a great tool to have in your inventory for repairs and custom equipment creation. Here on this channel, my mission is to combine fun, futuristic technology with traditional outdoors experiences. 3D printing for outdoors and everyday carry is one such interesting intersection of these two worlds that I aim to explore. Today in particular, we're going to take a look at five different, unique, and most importantly, useful types of things you can 3D print at home for everyday carry use. Number five, sheaths and holsters. Knives, multi-tools, firearms, and magazines are just some of the tools you might need to carry with you on a daily basis. Obviously, you need some sort of sheath or holster to secure it to your body or your pack. And while most people opt for a soft option such as nylon, hard options are always an option as well, especially for sheaths. Sometimes it's just outright hard to find a replacement and you need to make your own or maybe have specific needs that you just can't find in first or third party solutions like being Molly compatible or accommodating modifications you've made to your particular tool. I mean, check out this sheath. I 3D printed in ABS plastic for my old Cold Steel Peacemaker 3 EDC knife. It was actually one of the first things I designed and 3D printed for everyday carry use. And I gave it a belt loop, cordage lashing points, and a carabiner clip ring, giving me several options for how to mount this thing. Although for most of the time, it wound up living inside of my EDC bag. Number four tools. Another category of useful things you can 3D print are custom tools. Designing and printing them yourself lets you fit them to any form factor, like a whistle that fits inside of your survival tin, or a customized multi-tool that has a tool selection geared specifically for what you need in a shape that fits where you want it. 3D printed tools aren't lacking in durability either, because you're able to print them in durable materials like ABS, nylon, or even polycarbonate. Any tool you can think of that could reasonably function while made out of a durable plastic is a candidate for a 3D printed everyday carry tool. Take, for an interesting example, this 3D printed tick remover that sits in my first aid kit. Number three, replacement parts. Equipment isn't fallible. Sometimes something breaks and you need to fix it. Some of the time, especially today where companies are trying to force you to either outright replace items or at least make you use them to fix it for you, finding the parts to fix your stuff can be difficult. Or if you can find replacement parts, they're priced so high that it's more economical to just outright replace the unit. And that's where 3D printing comes in. As long as you know the dimensions of what you need to replace and it can feasibly made out of durable plastic, you can 3D print your own for cheap. Just to rattle off a few examples, zipper tabs, handles, lids, clips, wheels, grips, labels, knobs, and stands. Number two, adapters and custom mounts. With so many different standards and mounting types for various ecosystems, getting it all to play nicely together can be a bit challenging. 3D printing allows you to create your own custom adapters and mounts for virtually anything you want. You want to mount a GoPro to a Picatinny rail? You can make an adapter. And here's a great example, my own custom 3D printed adapter that lets me mount my GoPro to any standard camera mount. Fun fact, the majority of the GoPro footage you've seen filmed on this channel up until this point was filmed while using this exact adapter. And number one, cases and containers. You can make virtually any sized container you want with exactly the durability you want and whatever lid type you want. Where this really shines, I think, is maximizing usage of space inside of your bag. You can get everything to Tetris nicely together with some well thought out planning of your container sizing. Or maybe you just want a custom container that hangs off your belt or attaches to Molly. Really, anything you want, the sky's the limit here. Screw type lids, sliding lids, large, small, all designed by you for exactly the job it needs to do. And here's some examples of containers that I personally use. There's this sliding lid box I designed that's water resistant and floats. And there's also this Magic the Gathering deck box that I use whenever I'm off to go play cards. You can also make things like minimalistic wallets, battery containers, and my personal favorite, this Swiss Army style SD card holder that I have in my camera bag. 
It's not until you sit down and really think about it that the possibilities for desktop 3D printing's intersection with outdoors and EDC lifestyle really becomes apparent. Just looking at EDC stuff alone, I'm sure there's been a few interesting ideas that have popped off in your head aside from what I've covered in this video. Going forward, I'm certainly going to be doing some deep dives as to just what 3D printing is capable of in this regard, and I have some, shall we say, very interesting content planned about this. If you're interested in more videos on the intersection of 3D printing and the great outdoors, I'll leave a link to my playlist in the description down below, so check that out or any of my other videos on the general subject of technology and outdoors adventures. If you want to help out the channel, I'll also leave a link to my 3D print shop, which has a variety of outdoors-oriented 3D prints, some of which were shown off in this video, as well as Amazon affiliate links to my personal pick for a beginner-level 3D printer, of which I use one myself the Creality Ender 3. Make sure you subscribe as I post roughly once a week, leave a comment down below if you have any questions, and hit the like button if you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.